Arutiscabra costa is a highly abundant herbivorous interstitial snail that ranges down the Pacific coast from Baja California to Ecuador. Like many species of intertidal gastropod, Neurodiscabra costa lays um, its eggs inside capsules first. attached to the substrate. Inside this calcareous capsule, the embryos develop where they are sheltered from the external environment. The embryos start as a single cell and pass through several stages until they become a complete villager larvae with a shell, velum, eyes, and beating cilia. The velum and its beating cilia are very important structures because they allow the larvae to feed and swim in the plankton. After they have developed to this point, which takes around six weeks, the capsule falls off the substrate and the larvae are swept out to sea to feed in the plankton. The larvae have muscles that allow them to operate their swimming structures and to retract inside their shells to avoid predators. By using fluorescent stain, which stains only the muscles and a confocal microscope, we can get a better idea of what the musculature of the larvae look like. Even though the embryos develop inside capsules, they are not completely protected from the external conditions. More research is needed to understand exactly how effective the capsules are at protecting the larvae and what kinds of environmental conditions they can withstand. Uh, in the lab here, I'm running a salinity tolerance experiment with my larvae. I'm trying to see what kind of salinities they can tolerate and survive through. And so um, I'm incubating capsules with embryos at 29 degrees Celsius. And I have them in a range of different salinities from zero parts per thousand to 40 parts per thousand. Um, we have two replicates of the experiment. And so every three to four days, I We'll take, take the cups out, go over to the microscope, and open three of the capsules in each treatment to see if the larvae are still alive. Well, inside each treatment, which is a cup full of seawater, we have capsules on plates that we collected. And I'll open three capsules every time I check them with a pair of forceps and um, suck out the larvae using a pipette. And then I put them on a, a slide and look at them under the scope. Larvae in every treatment except zero parts per thousand survive the entire duration of the experiment, revealing an impressive range of salinity tolerance for these larvae. However, some abnormal development was seen in some of the treatments.